going to that would not have been totally beyond the bounds of a spot per possibility. Um, and presumably you've been in first prop and you've been making sure that your argumentation will hold no matter what. Um, I'm inclined to think that creates better debates anyway. Because um, if we talk about a specific place, we can actually say things that are true, um, as opposed to making sort of rather vague statements about hypothetical dictators. Um, that's, that's, that, that's a matter of taste, though. Um, in general, though, narrowing to a specific individual in cases of assassination or prosecuting, I think, is okay, if it's someone everyone knows. And everyone knows Robert Mugabe, everyone knows the Pope. Does that... Is that clear? Awesome. He was in Australia, actually. Um, we maybe get to talk about that horrendous priest in Melbourne, um, whose name I have promptly forgotten. Any other questions? Madam? Um, what do you do if you're a second speaker of first prop, and it is suddenly very, very clear to you that the first opposition has either no idea what your definition was, or spent seven minutes not listening, and they're getting up? Is it your fault or theirs? It's theirs fault, but It's definitely their fault. Your motion was crystal clear, and despite that, they have just ignored it. And you In which case, reach. jump for joy. You have already beaten them, right? Um, so, and you have, so, uh, but what's the problem, right? This sounds brilliant. The problem is that these debates aren't concerned to be second half debates. And that so you need to engage with something, you then spend the time reconstructing your debate to get, to get the debate going again. Well, so... Or just ignore them. I would be, it would depend how much stuff I'd already prepped and how confident I was that the judge had got my definition down. Because um, I could quite easily stand up and go, well, this is a bit annoying, isn't it, Mr. Speaker? Because we, uh, you know, Julia stood up and very clearly told you that we wanted to do this, and I get the impression that, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then you could go through their arguments in a little bit of detail explaining why they're not relevant. If you've got material you've prepped, you'd be like, and while we're here, I'm going to bring you some more reasons. Um, the way to stop that turning into a bottom half debate, I mean, you're, screwing second op is always going to be hard, but if you've covered most of the prop material, it's difficult to see how second prop are going to find anything to do, because they are similarly going to be screwed by not having anything to rebut from first op. And if you've covered enough material in first prop, and we'll talk in a bit about how you make material comprehensive in the required way, um, you should at least be able to beat first op and second prop. I would, I would have fun if I was there, though. I would just be like, well, this is annoying. Um, sorry, Judge. Um, I'm going to give you some more reasons there. Make sure you are crystal clear in explaining why it's not relevant, though. Like, you know, you, we, we can't fill in the gaps for you there on that. That's never happened to me, though. Like, definition, like, by crystal clear, I do mean crystal clear. Um, like, a definition should be incredibly easy to follow and then that will never happen to you. That was a very unhelpful answer, sorry. <laughs> Madam. Okay, what if I'm not sure if it's my speech or there are no, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't, uh, the first speech I didn't explain stuff uh, very clearly? You mean it is your fault? Yes, because it is. Well, you'll probably sure lose. <laughs> Do I re-explain it better on my in the second well, well, so you can't add anything to the definition. Um, if it's just a failure of explanation, you can clarify. You could pretend you're clarifying and hope the judge doesn't notice. Um, or you could go, well, to be honest, Mr. Speaker, we didn't think we needed that level of detail, but I suppose we would do it this way. And then it's like, I'm not adding to the definition. And then, you, know, you don't say, I suppose we would do it this way. You would say something like, well, Mr. Speaker, we didn't feel the need to give him that level of detail, because in these cases, what is always done is this. And then it's not adding to the definition. But like, intellectually dubious. Um, and your judge may be paying attention. I, at, at that stage, though, if your judge is paying attention, you are just in trouble, uh, if it is in fact your fault. And if you're not sure whether or not it's your fault, go for it and hope it's not your fault. But, you know, beat your partner up. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what to do when that happens. Make sure you debate with someone that doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's always their fault. Um, all right, anything else before we move on? Yeah, cool. Yeah. I don't want to get bogged down with like um, too long of a definition, and uh, the subject is a bit more theoretical, like saying pornography, yeah, and I have to define pornography. Should I take uh, like a more broad definition, or still try to do like, uh, like you said, with an example? Oh, so there are some cases where 
So fuzzy boundaries of yeah, a topic, yeah. right? Okay, so any number of motions. Por porn is a really good example. Um, offensiveness in art or in like hate speech. These are all examples where the boundaries of the concept are vague, right? And explaining that is quite difficult. And sometimes people get around this by being like incredibly expansive. So any naked flesh will now be banned or something, right? Um, I'm inclined to think that, that if you think you have arguments that back that up, by all means do that. Um, you can get around it in a couple of other ways. Mm -hmm. First, you can say, we accept that there are going to be ambiguous cases. That is a fact of life. We don't think that's really what this debate is about. Um, but maybe, in ambiguous cases, we just won't give them the benefit of the doubt. So, I don't need my definition to be crystal clear, because some concepts are vague. Right? Like, some films may or may not be pornographic. Um, Trying to think of it. Eyes Wide Shut, right? The Kubrick film. Yeah. Yeah? May or may not be pornographic, right? And you can go, well, look, Mr. Speaker, we're happy to realize that there are ambiguous cases, and where there are ambiguous cases, if, that, like, you know, if, like, you know, you can show that it's, you know, probably all right in a bit, like, there, there'll be some sort of authority presumably deciding whether or not it's porn, they might give it the benefit of the doubt. That's not what this debate is about. This debate is about spunk loving slut six, about which there is no ambiguity. Um, so you can try and marginalise okay. whether or not like these vague cases count too much, and I think that's probably that's usually more effective than just going like a very expansive definition of whatever it is. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Not a code, but we make a note of that. Um, yes, sir. How much into Prime Minister's speech should he alter the definition if he realises during his speech that he forgot something or? wasn't clear about something. Why have you done that? Um, <laughs> make sure you write better notes. Um, two minutes, three minutes, maybe. Um, after about halfway, I think it's a bit like, oh, and by the way, after about halfway, like, I wouldn't. Um, but also, it depends on how crucial a bit of your definition that is, right? Like, are you willing to take the hit of being marked down a bit for cheating in order to get that bit of the definition in? I mean, nowhere in the rules, technically, does it say the definition has to be at the beginning. Um, <laughs> you will get marked down for it, but if it's a really important bit of the definition, I suppose, get take the hit. Although, if you forgot about it, it's probably not that important. Um, again, that's one of those how long is a piece of string questions. Like, a judgment call based on the debate, what it is you've forgotten, why have you forgotten it, um, that sort of stuff. Gentleman over there? Uh, yeah. this is, it's more or less an example. Like, uh, last year's PUDC, the, the topic of the finals was this house believes that uh, moral teaching should be inculcated uh, using uh, educational institutions. So, when you're talking about uh, moral teachings or morality for that matter, mm -hmm. you can split it up into a couple of uh, sectors. Like, you can talk about religious morality or societal morality. The difference basically being that wearing a burqa is a religious, minor, uh, is a religious morality issue, while not wearing short clothes is an issue of societal mor morality that society does not approve of. So, uh, is it required to make it that expansive and detailed in the definition? You're not required to be uh, that expansive or that, def uh, or that detailed. Firstly, I would observe that that distinction may not be a distinction which is sort of familiar or intuitively obvious to your judges. Um, Things like, I mean, one of, the thing, one of the things that's slightly problematic about a motion that includes a phrase like moral teaching is that's going to mean an awful lot of different things to an awful lot of different people. My view is that they would be perfectly acceptable in that debate to go, there are all sorts of moral education, we're going to be talking about sexual stuff beyond um, the health stuff, right? So actual sexual morality, things like faithfulness, things like the importance of relationships, possibly even marriage being great. I think that would be okay. Um, you can narrow it down and say that we'll only be talking about religious morality for that matter. Well, so, we'll talk about so the difficulty with that would be that most... So how would you be running that? That's sort of... Exactly, that's what I'm trying to I don't know how you would make that work. Uh, so any school is going to be allowed to promote whatever religious moral code they like. Exactly. That's probably not what the motion means though, right? Like, the judges want to debate about whether, like, normal state schools are going to be doing more than imparting skills? Are they also be going, going, this is what it means to be a good person, or possibly even a good citizen? Because um, like church schools, or like um, Islamic schools, or whatever, are already promoting... Yeah, so it looks to me like if you do that, you're kind of running into a sort of side alley, maybe? But again, so the difficulty with that motion is it's not clear what it means. Um, 
how exactly would you go over the um, it I would example. pick one. Um, and I wouldn't pick religious schools because that's status quo in so many places. Um, I would go over talking about secular state schools. Um, by moral teaching, we're either talking about things like, oh, I don't know, respect for authority, possibly. Um, sexual ethics, maybe. Um, general citizenship stuff. Anti-racism. Uh, we can see how that might be a moral teaching. Um, but I would... Integrity, honesty, fraternity, equality, that kind of thing. Like. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to teach the ideals of the French Revolution to children. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> um, but, like, I would, I would probably do it in all the schools. I would just go for it. And I would pick some set of moral things we were going to teach children. And I would be very clear about why they're moral teachings rather than, like, practical ones. So, you, but like, everyone gets taught about sexual health already, or at least in Britain they do. Um, does everyone get access to condoms at a school in Israel? Yeah. No. Right. Some. Yeah, high schools. Yeah. yeah, you're not allowed to. I'm fairly sure you're not allowed to not give out condoms at a school in Britain. Not allowed to not give That's if they ask for it, or no, am I allowed no, no, to? So, so Catholic schools have to have like a school nurse who will give out condoms if asked, and the kids have to and the kids have to be told about like the fact that they can access free contraception. We have a guy in an alley. Hmm? We have a guy in an alley. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Um, He's of condom. What's your birth That's rate like? Um, <laughs> Alright, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on at this point. That is an unclear motion. So the onus is on you as first prop to clear that up. I think one of the ways to do that would be we're talking about all schools run by the state. These schools are secular in the main in most countries in the world. By moral teachings, just pick something off a laundry list and go for those. But then uh, they can again just, they can, you can again tell them that, like, Suppose you're sticking with honesty for that matter, integrity. Yeah. Uh, the opposition can. <laughs> We're going to get a different, better air conditioning room for the next. Hotel. Did she just turn us off? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Screw that. <laughs> She comes in again, I'll pretend I only speak Durka. <laughs> Which is true. Just do your rat thingy. Well, just go into Kenya Rwanda. It's so European. Yeah, but better than that. Yumba. Sorry. Um, uh, so, in this case, so you were talking, I wasn't. You lost it. Uh, what I was basically saying was, suppose you're talking about things like integrity or equality or all of these things. Yeah, yeah. Suppose you're talking about integrity and corruption. Suppose that is one of the issues in our laundry list. So the opposition can very easily and happily tell us that legally it is anyways wrong to be corrupt for that matter. So how is what you're doing somehow going to be any different? Well, that would be a problem. So you should avoid that in your definition. Mm -hmm. You should take pains to distinguish it from the world as is. And if you reckon, and you're probably right, most schools do tell people not to break the law. Exactly. Um, so you probably need to find some other bit of moral teaching. Um, <laughs> It's the same with racism, as you said, so yeah. anti-discrimination. Children are taught not to discriminate. It is legally wrong to discriminate, but they still do. Um, so it's not them. legally wrong to be racist in Britain, and I'm not sure if a school would like... So if, if, I, if I'm an employer, I can't be like, well, I'm only employing white people. Uh, that would be racial discrimination, but if I'm like, well, I'm only having white friends, no crime would be being committed. So that, if the state told me not to do that, if the state not told me not to be racist in my dealings with my friends, that would not be the state telling me to obey the law. That would be the state telling me to do something above following the law. So if you could show that it was the state encouraging children to do something over and above their legal obligations, that I think would pass the test of moral obligation. So basically we go with the line that the law needs to be followed in spirit rather than by the letter. Well, I would go away from the law. I would say these aren't legal obligations.